Hey everybody, it's uh, Shannon here from HostImprovements.com. We're going to do a little live feed this evening and uh, see how many people tune in. Uh, looks like my lighting isn't too good in here today. That's the one thing I forgot to look at, so sorry about that. Uh, we've got a, a few people tuning in here early on, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna give others a, a bit of a minute here to to tune in and uh, get situated and comfortable. But uh, I just want to welcome those of you that are here to the to the live stream tonight. It's been a little while since we've done one. I think uh, we did our last one in the fall, and uh, I may be a little rusty at it, so bear with me. But uh, we've got a, got a couple people commenting already. We've got JH and Derek Meyer. They've been tuned in, actually. I've been sitting here waiting to go, and uh, they've been tuned in for a little bit. And uh, if you've got any comments, just uh, print them up on the side there, and we can have a little chat about whatever you want to discuss, but hopefully DIY-related. So we're uh, just a few, uh, oh, I got a happy... Uh, Happy New Year there for Majit. Yes, and Happy New Year to everybody else tuning in. Uh, it's been a been an interesting year to say the least for, I think, everyone around the world. I think that's pretty safe to say. Uh, it's going to be a year that uh, we can definitely say none of us uh, experienced until now with all the problems with uh, COVID and that in the world. But uh, hopefully we're on the road to putting that behind us sometime this year and uh, getting back to somewhat type of a normal life, I guess. So uh, how's my sound? Would anybody want to comment on the sound? Is my sound okay? Let's see who else uh, wants to comment here. I want to thank, uh, I've got a couple of folks on the backside uh, doing some moderating. So I just want to thank them and uh, happy new year to them as well. They just help, uh, do some moderating on the comments, make sure we don't get anything uh, too crazy. Oh, here we go. We got lots of people commenting now. Uh, Rick Delve, he's a, he's a regular here and uh, he's saying the sound is good. We're getting a thumbs up from Patrick Wad. Uh, Manjit says uh, sounds good. So uh, looks like we're all good. Um, what else we got? Uh, everybody's looks like my sounds. All right. So I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, like I said, uh, maybe before some of you tuned in, Sorry, I've got the lighting. I could mess with it, but uh, it's a little late for that. I should have set that up a little earlier, but uh, hello to everybody that's saying hi and uh, happy new year. Uh, looks like we've got lots of people commenting in now. We got uh, uh, Sean in Alaska. Hi, Sean. Nice to see you again or hear from you. Uh, we got Jeffrey Wolf, Fraser Morrison, Sean. Oh, that's Sean in Alaska. Alaska. Uh, Fraser Morris, Larry Cook, High Ridge Handyman. Everybody's saying that it's sounding good and, and wishing Happy New Year's, so that's good. Uh, so yeah, so those of you who just tuned in, we we're just talking a little bit about COVID, and I don't want to spend a bunch of time on it, but uh, I hope that uh, everybody's making out all right. Uh, I've been fine, although you may have noticed that uh, our videos have uh, slowed down a little bit, and that's probably going to continue well, it is for sure going to continue for a little while here into the new year till we can get some things straightened out. But uh, then we can hopefully get right back to our regular, you know, kind of two videos a month or every two weeks sort of thing. So um, you're, you're also going to see from me this year probably a few more videos shot by myself. And again, because of COVID, um, it's just easier uh, right now for social distancing to kind of be shooting a few things on my own. So uh, you'll have to bear with me. You know, the camera angles won't be as good. I don't have my number one guy following me around with camera. So uh, you just got to <laughs> live with what I can get you for now. So so we got lots of people uh, tuning in. Um, uh, Duke, Happy New Year from Canada. Thanks, Duke. Uh, Michael, Norman, JL, uh, we're, or, sorry, Gil, you're from San Antonio, Texas. Uh, I'm sure it's nice down there. It's, it's pretty nice here today. I think we got up to six degrees Celsius. Oh, what's that on the old uh, Fahrenheit scale? I don't know. That's around 40, I think, 45. So that's pretty nice for uh, 3rd of January up here in Canada uh, in Saskatchewan. So we've got the snow melting and uh, everything like that. So 
Uh, who else we have? We have Mill uh, Will Springer, uh, Michael uh, Ricard. You're saying my work is excellent. Thanks, Michael. I uh, appreciate that. I, I do the best I can. I mean, I, I screw up like everybody else and I, I may not have the best system for everything, but I'm just trying to show you guys what I like to do and how I like to do things. So, um, you know, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with what I'm doing. So um, that's why I'm passing it on to you guys. Um, Hi, Ridge Handyman. Let's see what you're asking. Are, are they planning any type of shutdown in your area? Well, as of right now, I haven't heard of anything. There are have been some uh, shutdowns in other parts of Canada again, um, right where I am in Saskatchewan here. Uh, we've got a lot less people for one thing. So we're spread out. We've got a lot of, lot of area here. So things have been not as bad here as in the bigger centers. So uh, things haven't been too bad, but um, I don't, I haven't heard any rumors of shutting down. Uh, we were shut down a little bit months ago, um, but, Pretty much most things are operating. They're just restricted on what they can do. We've had some things change back in restaurants and pubs and that sort of thing as far as capacity and hours. But uh, <laughs> Chaka Gillis, she's always always got uh, the Ryobi is trash thing up here for me and the $2 uh, super chat. So I appreciate that, Chaka. Um and we got people asking why Ryobi is trash. I, I'm not going to say it is or isn't, but uh, Chaka de definitely has an opinion on that every time. <laughs> uh, so anyways, yeah, so things haven't been shut down here at all, really, uh, for quite a while. But there's a lot of restrictions in place for sure. Uh, what else we have here? Uh, Norman, so here's a good message. We've all heard this one. Stay home, stay safe. And uh, he's saying regards to my family. And yeah, my family's all been good. Nobody here has been sick. Uh, nobody that I directly know has had COVID, so it's all good. Um, Sean in Alaska, you were minus 12 last night, and it's 11 above now. Yeah, we've had some crazy swings, too. Uh, a few days ago, it was pretty cold here, and uh, there's, it's been windy, though, so it's it hasn't felt quite as warm as, as it was. Um, what, who else do we have here? Uh, Jeffrey uh, Palmatier, hello from Port Huron, Michigan. Nice to see you, Jeffrey. Um, Shane Mann, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to all of you as well. So part of, uh, part of what I want to discuss here tonight, and uh, we'll maybe get it kind of out of the way, if you've been with us for, for a few years now, you know that uh, – Every year around the end of the year, or beginning of the next year, we do a little uh, review of, of what, what we just uh, had gone through in the previous year and uh, just hit a few facts and figures and that sort of thing. And uh, once we get through some of that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little bit to start out with, and then we're going to move on to some questions and stuff. Uh, Mike L., I, I see you're mentioning that you guys are in lockdown there in Ontario and yeah. Uh, that's where I was referencing to before Ontario. I, th I think all of Ontario has kind of been locked down now since Christmas. And uh, unfortunately, that's just one way that uh, it's got to go just to try to get this thing under control. So so let's uh, let's have a look at, uh, at last year. So 2020, as I said, crazy year for all of us with the COVID thing. But uh, for how, us at House Improvements, we had a pretty decent year. Um, we did have a little less content go up because uh, we were restricted a little bit in, in shooting and, and getting things, uh, you know, up and posted for you guys. So, so you, you will have noticed we, we had uh, 22 new videos. I think uh, the year before we had close to 30 because we kind of punched a bunch out there right at the end of the year. But uh, in 2020, we had uh, 22 new videos and we also released 15 vlogs, which is something else we uh, continued with in 2020. And I, th I think those are going over pretty well. Um, I, I hope anyways, it's something that I think is, is kind of interesting. Um, it's maybe not quite as informative as our other videos, but it's, it kind of gives you guys a little different aspect of, of a project or projects that I'm doing. Um, our channel received 20 million views, la tw or sorry, 25 million views last year. That was up a little bit over the year before, which is great. And uh, that equated to uh, 2.8 million hours of you guys watching me, which is a little creepy. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, it's that's great. Um, 
I, I really appreciate everybody tuning in and watching our stuff and uh, sharing it, liking it, subscribing, all that stuff. That's, that's what we're here for is to help you guys out and uh, you guys helping us by sharing it. So uh, speaking of sharing, we had uh, 138,000 shares of our content. So, so that's pretty good. All those numbers were up just slightly from the year before. So, Hey, things, things were all right overall. Uh, our two most watched videos that we released last year were how to make common rafters. Uh, I think we released that one uh, late fall or early fall, somewhere in there. So uh, that's pretty good for one that really has only been out for a few months to be viewed quite a bit, um, you know, already at this point. Another one that was uh, earlier in the year was how to remove carpet from stairs. Didn't think it was going to be that popular, but uh, it has a ton of views. So uh uh, I think that one was in like January or February, so it had all year to stack up some views. So, so that's good. Those were uh, those were our most popular, or most watched videos. Um, one thing, well, let's look at a couple questions first. Um, Scott Green, I'm a complete novice, but managed to build a 16 by 34 deck by watching your videos. Big thanks. No problem, Scott. Uh, Sixteen by thirty-four. That's a that's a beauty of a, a deck. Um, you know, projects like that. Uh, you guys can always tune into the forum and, and get direct help from us. Uh, from not only from me, but some of the other informative people that we have there. We've got some skilled, uh, not only DIYers but tradespeople there as well, help, helping out with information. So it's a good place to go and uh, get some extra assistance if you ever have questions. But yeah, that's great, Scott. Um, Jason uh, Von de Linden, I think. Sorry, Jason, if I screwed up that last name. How much would you charge for a 12 by 12 edition on a house? You know, we, we get a lot of questions like that, not only here on the live stream, but, you know, in the forum, that sort of thing. And it, it's a really hard question to answer because so many things are changed depending where you are. Not only your labor costs, uh, cost of materials, um, just there's there's too many variables, so it's really hard to to really help anybody with something like that unless I know the exact area or you're maybe from my area. So I really can't say. You know, the best thing I can say is uh, really uh, get three quotes from some local tradespeople that uh, you've been recommended to, and uh, go from there. That's that's really your best way to to feel out the waters for costs in your area. Um. Jose Beltran, you're the best master. Well, I don't know what the best, or did you say beast? No, it's best. I don't think, uh, I don't know if I'm the best, but uh, I seem to have a knack for helping people out. Let's put it that way. So I appreciate it though. Um, backyard uh, bird lady. Okay, let's see what you have. Love your videos. I've learned so much and you gave me the courage to start siding my house with vinyl the past fall. I'll be finishing it in the spring. Keep up the great videos. No problem at all. Uh, vinyl siding is something I do a fair bit of and have done a fair bit of. So uh, as you notice, I have a lot of videos related to that. And, and it's really not that difficult of a product to work with. So I know there's some areas that don't use vinyl siding much at all. Uh, it's just not conducive to their climate. But where it is, it's a pretty economical uh, exterior finish. So... Uh, Another comment, and this is actually from one of the one of our moderators, um, Prairie Plant Girl, and uh, she's just reminding all of you and reminding me to remind you to smash the thumbs up button. So click that thumbs up as you're watching here today, and that helps out our ratings and uh, and uh, gets gets uh, everybody excited. So hit the thumbs up if you wouldn't mind. Um, Sean in Alaska, the forum is fantastic. Well, thanks, Sean. And that's that's why I was mentioning it there. Um, we, we really have some good people there to help out. And uh, we have a vast array of knowledge amongst those people. Uh, everything from uh, tiling to fencing to interior doors to... Uh, we, we, we've got some concrete people on there. I'm not a big concrete person. So luckily, we have some people there. We've got electrical plumbing we've just got everything there so and we've got people that can back up what they say so so it's a great place for for help you're right uh 
Yeah, Matt Williams. Uh, too many variations in a question like that. I think he, he's probably referring to that cost of an addition that uh, that other guy had there a few minutes ago. And that's just it. There's just too many variations and uh, changes from area to area. Uh, James Stonehouse. To keep my material cost down and, and student learning improved. I have students reuse pallets to make small wall projects. Most of my students have never used a hammer or a crowbar before. Yeah, you know, pallets are a great uh, supply or, or a great way to get some wood for free, really, because there's a lot of businesses that just pile them up outside and you can pick them up. They take a little bit of time to dismantle. Um, I haven't done any real projects with pallets. I burned some pallets in a wood stove, but I uh, uh, know they're a great way to to save uh, the budget a little bit, especially in a school situation and let the students in. And a lot of it's still good wood. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, Joseph G, happy new year. This is Joe from New York. What do you think is the safer mold proof floor for a basement? DMX plastic with plywood flooring on top or one inch foam board with plywood on top? I would go with the DMX just because you can get a little bit of air actually uh, circulation through there. I feel like foam, just flat foam right on the concrete is just going to trap some moisture there. So uh, I think the DMX is, is a better product. Although I've, I've honestly never used it myself. I'm, I use, uh, products like, uh, the dry core or barricade flooring subfloor panels. Um, and they are more expensive per square foot, but they're, they're really easy to handle. And I've got videos with those if anybody wants to see them. Uh, Scott Gary, I'm doing a big house reno and have watched a lot of your videos from drywall, carpentry, windows, doors, and even garage door openers. Thanks for the help. You're welcome, Scott. Good luck with your project. Uh, Sean, Alaska. Here's a good question from Sean. Uh, he's asking, are your lumber prices still crazy? And do you have any idea when they may come down? Sean, our lumber prices for, for quite a while. And in fact, maybe even still now, my local suppliers wouldn't even give me a uh, quote on lumber that was any more than good for a day, which is very unusual. Usually you at least get 30 days out of them, but uh, the, the lumber prices were just so volatile there, especially back in uh, April, uh, April, May, June sort of thing. Uh, we've seen a slight decrease in some framing lumber, I think, maybe some plywood, excuse me, but uh, yeah, they really haven't come down much and I don't know when they're going to come down. Um, it's the old supply and demand thing, right? Um, I think there was some mills that were closed and and uh, this has affected everything. And we're, we're seeing supply problems, honestly, here with, with a lot of little things in my industry. So, and I think it's the same in most places. That was a good question though. Uh, Chad Johnson, great videos. Keep up the great work. Thanks, Chad. Okay, well, I'm going to... Oh, here's Sean. What else did he say? Uh, just paid 54 bucks for a sheet of three quarter inch plywood. LOL. Ouch. Yeah, actually, uh, just standard three quarter inch plywood. I just bought two sheets and I think it was something like, yeah, 50, 60 bucks Canadian. So that's ridiculous when it was like $35, 60, well, eight months ago, let's say. Okay, let's, uh, let's get back to my uh, year review a little bit. Um, one of one of the big things that that really helps us out here at House Improvements, uh, besides you guys watching the videos and uh, you know looking at the ads, obviously, and that sort of thing on the videos and sharing our videos and all that, is uh, our Patreon supporters. And you you hear me mention Patreon at the end of pretty well every video uh, that I do because it is important to us. Um, it's it's a way for for viewers and supporters to help support us and uh, make a little donation. I always call it our, my, my tip jar or our tip jar. Uh, it's just a way for people to contribute a little bit if they want. Oh, Handy Nelson, uh, $3 on the Super Chat. Thank you. Thanks for, thanks for everything. Much appreciated. I appreciate uh, you con contributing here, Handy, as well. Thanks. Um, so with Patreon, as I said, it's our tip jar. Uh, it, it just helps us with some of the little things that we need to do here to, to keep operational, um, you know, helps in us upgrading some of our equipment, uh, you know, editing software, uh, filming equipment, uh, sound equipment, lighting, that sort of thing. Um, it, it's just a way that, that you can contribute to us if you want, you don't have to at all. 
Uh, but we do appreciate the patrons, uh, patrons that we do have. And uh, we've got some long timers there. They've been around, uh, I think I wrote it down here, I think 2016. No, 2015 uh, and 16, obviously, but they go back as far as 2015, which has to be right when we started Patreon. And uh, that'd be Anthony Key and Dark Clothier. Um, and the reason I mentioned their names uh, is they're, they're from that. They're actually both signed up on December 3rd of uh, 2015. And uh, as of right now, they're both our biggest uh, contributors through that, through that time. And uh, I just want to thank you both for uh, supporting us and uh, sticking with us this long. And I appreciate it a lot. Um, also on that list, they haven't been there quite as long, but uh, a couple other names. Uh, so I said, Anthony Key and Dark Clothier. I want to mention Robert Dees and uh, Stephen Neptune. So those are our four top uh, supporters right now on Patreon. Uh, and that's lifetime. So uh, for as, as long as they've been there, um, and uh, they're all from 2015 to 2017, it looks like. So we appreciate very much what you guys do for us, and uh, thank you. Um, so other ways that you can help support us, obviously, is the ads on our channel. And, and I know sometimes they're a pain in the butt, and you got to wait to skip and all that. But that that's all part of how we can make a, a little bit of money to keep things moving here. Uh, we've got our Patreon. And we've also got PayPal, so there's links for, for all those things. Uh, if you feel like making a donation, go right ahead. If you don't, no problem at all. So um, I, I already mentioned the uh, the forum, but here's a couple stats from the forum. So we're really busy, and right now we're teetering on the edge of having 60,000 posts on 9,100 different topics. Um, so that's that's a lot of posts. That's a lot of information. And there is a search bar on there, and I encourage people to search first if they can, because a lot of your questions are in, and comments are a lot the same all the time. And uh, but sometimes the search, the words you use are too generic, and there's just too many subjects on that. And and I understand that. So um, you know, if you don't come up with something on the search, please just uh, it costs you nothing. Just sign up and uh, post your own question, start your own thread, and. Uh, Usually myself will answer everybody at some point, but uh, sometimes some of the other people get a hold of it before me and they got you all on the right track and there's no point in me chiming in. But uh, generally I try to chime in almost on everybody. So, so that's the forum. Um, some of our guys, some of our regulars, and they've been with us for a long time too on the forum. And I just want to mention their names as well. We got Spruce and Aaron and Wayne. Those three guys have been there I think since we started pretty much uh, they, they've just been there and they, they never ask for anything and uh, they just want to, they just want to do what I do too, is just help people. So that's what we're all there for. Scott Gray. Thanks a lot for the, uh, the super chat there. Thank you. Um, then we've over the time, because this, the forum's been up there for a long time too. So we've got a lot of regulars and uh, I just want to mention Dan and, and, uh, everyone else on there that just comes out and helps. That's, you know, that's what we need. We need, sometimes there isn't one answer that, that fits what you're doing. So we get, get our heads together and we get you on the straight and narrow. <laughs> so, okay. So uh, what else we got going on here? Uh, James Stonehouse, is it possible to mail in a donation? Uh, not really, James. Um, uh, you can do a super chat right here if you want. I'm not even sure how that works. I think there's a symbol down below you can do. Uh, but really the easiest easiest way if you want to is PayPal or uh, Patreon. So I, I appreciate anything you can do. Um, Sean in Alaska. Wow, that's huge on the forum. Yeah, we have, we have tons of people. I feel like I'm talking all about the forum here, but it, it is, it's a big part of our channel. And uh, it, it's absolutely free, just like watching our videos. So, uh, yeah, check it out. Uh, Kevin Tillich, uh, he's a regular here. I recognize the name. He's just saying, hope everyone had a great Christmas and a, and a good New Year's. And, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I did personally. I had a good Christmas. It was different. Uh, it was just uh, basically my wife and I and my kids sitting around. We played a lot of games. We watched a lot of Big Bang Theory, <laughs> Netflix, all that stuff. 
Um, but it was a good time. Had a few drinks, had lots of food, too much food. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was just quiet, but it was, it was different and it was, it was nice. Uh, there was nothing wrong with it. Uh, of course I missed getting together with my normal group of friends and stuff, but, uh, we got lots of years ahead of us for that, hopefully. So we should be good. Um, uh, Romero. Yeah. Romero, you were the first channel subs I subscribed to. Thank you for your videos. Hey, no problem. I appreciate that. We've got lots of subscribers. You know, that's one stat I didn't. Oh, yeah. No, I have that here somewhere. 600 680,000 subscribers. Did I mention that? Yeah, so we, we made a pretty good leap forward. Uh, we gained 123,000 subs last year, uh, which made us sub sub surpass the 680,000 subscriber mark. So really, we uh, we should hit over three quarters of a million subscribers by the end of uh, 2021, which is phenomenal. Uh, we've been doing this uh, 2010, I believe, we posted our first videos. So uh, we've been doing this for quite a few years and and we're inching in on that million mark. So let's make it happen this year. No, not the million. We won't make the million, uh, but we'll make the three quarters of a million for sure. Um, yeah, I think that was all I had on uh, our subscribers. So, I mean, there's, there's just so many of you guys and uh, I appreciate it. We've got right now about 78 people tuning in right now. Um, we generally at some point hit 100, 130. So that's good. I'm glad that uh, uh, you guys are enjoying the, the live stream. So let's get back to a few questions. Oh, and the thumbs, the thumbs up. You guys are smashing it now. It's looking better. So don't forget, hit the thumbs up. Um, Curtis Hutchinson, have you ever made a tool comparison video yet? Um, I don't think direct comparison. We've got, usually when we do tool, you know, how to use a, uh, let's say a brad nailer. You know, when we did that video, I've, I've usually got different brands because uh, a lot of my tools I do, I don't, I use a lot of Milwaukee, but they don't have every line of tools. So um, usually when we're doing uh, tool videos, tool related videos, we've got different lines out there. Uh, we're, we've not really had anybody ever send in some tools that we've done a specific video on. Um, so no, but, but a hands on comparison, I, we, I don't think we've really done that yet at all. Is that something you guys are interested in? I, I don't know. You know, there's a lot of channels that do that. So we weren't thinking we would do that, but we could, we could easily do that. So, um, so that was from Curtis. Good question. Um, CR, what do you think about carpet tiles? Uh, carpet tiles, you know, I haven't really dealt with carpet tiles since I was doing commercial construction when I was younger. Um, you know, there we've seen it quite often in commercial buildings and that sort of thing. Um, you know, I, residential, I don't know if I'd really use it in residential. I, I'm not up on the newest stuff for carpet tile, so maybe they've gotten nicer. It is, from what I know, it's it's a commercial looking flooring more, mostly, and it's great in commercial because, you know, if you've got those carpet tiles and it's in your main path of traffic coming in and out of your business, they wear out, right? But you can just change those tiles that are worn out and uh, or if they get stained or dirty, right? So, I, I mean, it, I think it has its place. I don't, uh, I don't really see it in residential and that's mostly what I do. So, um, Charles Singh, um, do I need uncoupling membrane in a small kitchen? Good solid wooden floor, six year old house, good bones, anything cheaper than Dietra. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a user of, uncoupling membranes honestly uh i think if you're going to go to all the trouble spending money on uh, tiled floor uh, uncoupling membrane is a good idea I, I really do um unless you're going on a really sound concrete floor that has no cracking or anything i'm a, a pretty firm believer in un uncoupling membranes now detra which is a sluter product uh, which you see me use in my videos that's what i use uh there are other brands out there but i have no experience with any of them I would bet they're basically the same thing, honestly, but uh, I, I don't have any exact um, experience with other brands other than the Schluter Dietra. Um, 
if you're doing a, a heated tile floor, then I would definitely use the uncoupling membrane and the Dietra heat. It's, it's just such an easy system to use. And I have a video uh, for that too. So um, anyways, hopefully that helped Charles. I don't know. Uh, do, 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 do. Who else do we have? We've got CG. Uh, we'll, would love to see more videos this year. Been watching since 2016. Before we do a project, I check if you, uh, screen just jumped, if you have a video about it. I appreciate that, CG. Yeah, we've got a ton of videos. You know, that's one thing I didn't add up. Have we hit 400 yet? I think we have. I'm not even sure. Um, it's getting to be a big list, that's for sure. Thanks for watching us, though. Uh, Patrick Wade, we've got a $10 uh, super chat there. Thank you, Patrick. And his comment is, I've watched so many of your videos, learned so much. Thank you for your videos and everyone responsible for making it happen. Thanks, Patrick. I really appreciate that. Um, we're, we're a small crew here. There's me and, and my brother-in-law is my partner in this business. And, uh, and uh, really, we do pretty much everything you see here. Um, my sister's helping out tonight behind the scenes as well moderating but uh you know it's really just the two of us and honestly we both uh do a heck of a lot of work to try to keep this this thing going so and i, I appreciate when people like you notice that and uh and uh, show appreciation for it thank you uh rkdk how to fix uneven ceiling line about one inch difference uneven ceiling line I'm not 100% sure what you're, what type of ceiling line you're talking about. I don't know if you're talking about a suspended ceiling or, sorry, I, I'm not just sure. I'll try to see if you comment again here and see if you can clarify that a little bit. Uh, Kevin Tillich, buy Milwaukee before any other brand, you won't be disappointed. I can't argue with Kevin on that. <laughs> I, I'm a big Milwaukee fan and everybody knows it here. Um, yeah, I'll leave it there. Uh, Sean in Alaska. Uh, now this must be referring back to something else that Kevin said. Anyway, Sean's saying it must be his favorite maybe was how to frame walls. Favorite video that I did. I'm not too sure. Uh, he says Shannon's video was the easiest explained one I found. I appreciate that, Sean. Uh, James Stonehouse. Have you thought about making videos for young carpenters, projects such as dog houses, sandboxes, bird houses, etc. My uh, scout troop would certainly learn from it. You know, that's, it's not a bad idea that the, some of those subjects have actually crossed my mind because it's not only young, young uh, carpenters or young people that would do those sorts of projects. I mean, how many people have dogs, right? How many people need a dog house? So those are, those are things that I think we probably should maybe look at doing a little bit more of these smaller type projects. And, uh, and it can help people like you, James, who have these, uh, these young budding, uh, maybe carpenters that they want to learn a few skills. So yeah, no, that's something we could probably look into. Thanks for the suggestion. Uh, Abdi Omar says, hello, hello, hello. Hey bud. Patrick Johnson. What is a good siding material that imitates stucco? I currently have vinyl siding and I would like to have more, a more smooth surface. Um, well, I can't really think of any panel material that really imitates stucco. I mean, I think if you want stucco, you, you want stucco, right? Uh, I would uh, rip off your siding, foam your house if you need extra insulation and uh, get someone to stucco it. Um, there are some different exterior finishes that come in like four by eight sheets or whatever. Um, I don't think most of them look that great. Uh, you just, you just have all these seams and stuff, right? So um, I don't know. I think if you want stucco, you, you go to stucco. That's it's, there's no cheap way about that. So uh, we've got another uh, $10 super chat from Devin Hale. Thanks Devin. I really appreciate it. I can't see if you made a comment. No, it doesn't look like you commented, just uh, made the contribution. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so we'll move on here. 
BHA, I don't know how you're saying that, BHADZ100. What flooring can I put on top of old vinyl? Um, depending on the vinyl, if it's non cushioned vinyl, like, you know, a really soft vinyl, uh, you can put other vinyl over it. You can put uh, laminate vinyl plank or laminate vinyl tile over it. Uh, if it's prepped properly and it's the right type of vinyl and it's in decent shape, you could even tile over it if you wanted to. I wouldn't recommend that. I, I, I really like to strip back old layers like that. I know it's a pain in the butt and, and honestly my own kitchen is a good example of layer after layer. I think there's three layers of vinyl in, in that kitchen and an extra layer of uh, subfloor even over top of one of them. Uh, next time I renovate that kitchen, it's getting a gut job and uh, hopefully a whole bunch of videos shot in it. So, um, but there are, there definitely are some options of carpet. I mean, that can go over it. Um, but typically I suggest removing it and uh, getting right back to the, to the original flooring and, and start from there. Um, uh, Jersnate. I will be renovating my bathroom, 25 square feet of floor. Should I do a heated floor? Uh, well, 25 feet, that's not a very huge bathroom. So uh, it's, you know, it's pretty reasonable in cost really. Um, it's, it's really a preference thing. I mean, uh, you guys seen the video that I did, my bathroom right across the hall there, we did the heated floor. And that thing's awesome. You walk in there in the morning, it's on a, th a thermostat that cuts in and out kind of for the time of day we want it to. But you walk in there first thing in the morning and it's nice and nice and warm. Our cat, I think, spends half her day on that floor now. As she gets older, she wants to lay there and soak up some heat. So uh, it's, it's your call, man. Um, do I recommend heated floors under tile? I do. And I think a bathroom is a great place. Um, CG, is there a way to extend the life of near end of life wood windows. COVID made ordering and installing so hard to hire in our rural town. Um, you know, honestly, a good, it depends how far they're gone. If there's rot there, uh, you can fill rot with Bondo and paint them up and seal them up as best you can and try to get a couple more years out of them. If they're just peeling and just weathered and that sort of thing, scrape them as best you can and give them a good coat of paint and, uh, you know, you'll get a little bit more time out of them. Uh, if there's really nothing, you know, the seals aren't broken, that sort of stuff, you can even, um, uh, get somebody to come in and metal clad them, which is basically, uh, custom bending. <coughs> it's not COVID custom bending, uh, um, some sheet metal or some, you know, aluminum or, or colored metal and they can custom bend it and, and attach it. And then they caulk all the joints and stuff. And, and honestly, it's a great way to keep from having to paint your windows all the time. That's for sure. And, uh, but, but if you're, if you're planning on changing them anyways, I probably wouldn't go to that route. If you're you know planning on the next three to four to five years to change them, uh, just cause of the cost, you might as well save that money. Just give them a good scraping and paint them up and, uh, check the caulking and that sort of stuff, the glazing, make sure they're all right. And you get a little bit more time out of them. Um, so that was CJ. Oh, here's uh, RKDK, regular sealing, uneven joint line with the wall. Okay, so you must be talking about a drywall ceiling and it's it's for some reason sagging or whatever. There, there isn't too much you can do with that if it's drywall, uh, unless unless you can, if it's sagging and you can screw it up higher or like screw it tighter and uh, fix that joint. But uh, if it's just bad mudding or bad painting, uh, I don't know, without seeing it, I can't really say, but chances are there isn't a whole lot you can do with it. Um, bugs. Uh, Sean in Alaska again. Uh, what was the first video of yours I ever found, Shannon? I'm not a car... Oh, that was the first video I ever found of yours. So that was the framing you're talking about. I'm not a carpenter, and I'm using the framing video to build a 20 by 24 cabin this year in Alaska. Boy, that'd be awesome. That's a dream build. Who, who doesn't want to build a cabin in Alaska? Right on, Sean. Send us some pictures on the forum. Uh, Devin Hale, I believe I already mentioned your super chat there, so that's that's good. Thank you, Devin. Let me see. Yeah, I did mention Devin's. Thank you. Adam uh, Zitter, 
Zirkoff. I constructed my first shed this year after watching your videos. Thank you so much for your detail. Can you possibly um, do one installing skylights or dormer windows? Thanks again. Um, I'll, I don't know if it's ever going to come up. I'm not a big skylight fan. Um, and dormer windows, that's something that you don't see a whole lot of here either. So chances are pretty slim, honestly. Um, unfortunately, sorry about that, Adam. Matthew K, thanks for your videos. They were a huge help with framing windows, setting rafters, installing metal roofing for my quarantine porch build this past summer. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, lots of lots of people were uh, were home and off work, and uh, you know, either just because of shutdowns or just uh, their their health, they didn't want to jeopardize their health. So a lot of people were at home doing some stuff, and and we noticed that with the amount of uh, traffic we had, you know, people watching our videos and stuff. So uh, as, as you mentioned, there your quarantine porch, uh, lots of people had COVID projects going on. So that's great. Glad we could help. Um, John Gordon, uh, just with a comment here. Thank you, Shannon. Keep up the great work. No problem, John. Um, so we, we're getting lots of people uh, chatting here. That's great. Um, I think I kind of went through pretty much every everything I wanted to discuss on uh, 2020. For 2021, um, you know, it looks like COVID isn't going away anytime really, really soon. So I mentioned before, um, we're, we're going to have to back off a little bit. We're, we're going to release one video every month here for the next few months until some things change and we can more easily do some videos. Excuse me. Um, I'm, I'm on a, a project right now where like I've been able to stay working, which is great. I, I'm really glad. And the project I'm, I've been on the last couple of months is, is an empty house. So uh, it's really been good for this situation we're in in the world for me to be able to go there and work and uh, other people in the trades, uh, that's ideally what they want right now is an empty house to work in, but uh, it's been good. I'm just dealing with, uh, there's just myself and, and some other subs there. So when the homeowners coming and going a little bit, but it's been good. So we've been kind of separated away from people. Um, but I haven't been able to really shoot any videos there. Uh, a lot of the stuff I'm doing is all stuff we've got. So unfortunately uh, it would have been nice to just set up the cameras and, and roll out a bunch of videos, but there really hasn't been the opportunity there. Um, so anyways, we're going to, we're going to cut back a little bit this year. Uh, hopefully maybe we can make up for it at the end of the year and pump out a little, few more videos. But, uh, for right now, unfortunately, I'm going to just step back a little bit and, uh, we're going to slow, slow things down a little until uh, things get a little safer. Um, and as I mentioned too, if you didn't tune in earlier, um, there's going to be more of me shooting videos, which unfortunately is a little tougher for me to do. You don't get the good camera angles you get when my my pros here and uh, that sort of thing. And I usually use the GoPro. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a little different, but it's still a video. I try to make them as inform informative as I can. So uh, just bear with me on some of those. Um, I think I'll probably maybe look at doing some vlogs a little bit and uh, maybe some more time-lapse videos. We've, we've done a couple of those. And for the most part, the reviews have been pretty good. You know, people are liking them. We get the odd person that doesn't really like them. But uh, I, I think they're a good way to look at, a, you know, see a project going on and maybe not getting the detailed information about what I'm doing, but just viewing the process of how I go about moving through that project. So uh, I think I think they're good. I, I, uh, I think they're still informative in their own way. So I'll probably be doing a few of those as well. And uh, live streams, I, I think for the most part, you guys, you know, we're not getting a ton of people showing showing up, but it maybe makes it easier because it gives me a better chance to to look at the the questions here and try to get to as many as I can. So, um, you know, hopefully we can do one every couple three months or so, and uh, just touch base with everybody, see how everybody's doing, and uh, keep in touch. So. Um, as far as videos, suggestions, we always like if you guys want to comment some video suggestions here or in the comments after this goes uh, up on the channel um, for others to view. Uh, you can make comments below it too with video suggestions uh, for next year or this year. Um, 
as I said, uh, as well before, um, with you guys watching our videos, liking our videos, you know, clicking the thumbs up, um, sharing our videos, uh, commenting, all that helps out us. It just helps us rank better, uh, helps us read what you guys want to see and what you don't want to see. So uh, it just, all, all those little things, if you can do it, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications, all that stuff. We just appreciate everything that you guys can do to help us out to spread the word of house improvements. <laughs> so uh, let's, let's, uh, what time are we getting here? So we've been going about 45 minutes. We'll probably go another 15, 20 minutes here and uh, let's get to some more questions. Um, so Adam uh, Pacula doing walkout deck on the slopes of a roof. So I guess you're asking if I'm going to do a video on that, or maybe you're telling me you're doing that. I'm not too sure. Um, that that isn't always the best idea. There's a lot of things you got to worry about with a with a deck that's built out over a sloped roof because at some point that deck has to rest on that roof, which creates a penetration that you've got to flash around, seal around to keep the roof from leaking. So um, you have to be careful doing that sort of thing and uh, really think it through. So I'm not sure if you're asking a question there or making a statement. I don't really know why. I'm sorry. Uh, Sean saying he'll post pictures on the forum. Uh, that was for his deck, I believe. So, or no, that was the cabin he's building. That's right. That's right. He's fall. He's felled all the trees, uh, in the past summer, cut, cut in the driveway and pad moved in, uh, moved into the place before the snow started. Oh, he's off the grid even. Holy, you're a trooper. Awesome, Sean. Um, uh, or, or Anton, I'm not sure if I got your name right there. Um, is Canada government helping small business owners? Uh, yeah, there's all kinds of uh, programs out. I mean, they've done a lot just to help people in general right off the start. And I th think they've done a pretty decent job. Uh, I'm not too sure how we're ever going to pay for all this, but uh, I think every country is pretty well in the same same boat when it comes to that. Uh, but yeah, there is there is some small business uh, loans and and things they have going on uh, to help us out here. But uh, that's something you can look up on their website if you're interested in it. Uh, Fraser Morrison, my first video of yours was when you were showing how to install the black two balusters on the deck stairs. Okay. It was really easy to follow and ended up doing the entire deck with them. Thanks for the video. Yeah, that was on our uh, deck video. Yeah, that was definitely the railing. Uh, we, we had a wood railing basically with uh, round black, I think they were aluminum balusters. It looked pretty sharp. So I'm glad it helped you out, Fraser. Uh, Illa K, finishing basement is my coming upcoming project. Well, watch your framing video. Maybe you should do a whole basement uh, finishing all aspects of it. Um, honestly, pretty much the videos I have would pretty much take you right through start to finish uh, finishing a basement. Um, of course, mine for my area deals with insulation and vapor barriers and everything. I'm not exactly sure where you're from, so you may not need some of that. But uh, honestly, there's pretty well every video you need to finish a basement on my list already, but we could do a project someday. Maybe that'd be a, uh, one of those, uh, uh, time-lapse videos It'd be a pretty long one likely, but, uh, it could be something we could look at next time I do a complete basement. Uh, Michael, uh, what's an uncoupling membrane and membrane and what are they, what are its uses? So an uncoupling membrane we were talking about a little earlier. So it's used under tile and it is a, a membrane with, kind of two pieces to it. So you use mortar and put it down on your substrate, which is your, you know, subfloor, whether it's wood or concrete or whatever. And what the membrane does is if there's any movement in that subfloor or the structure underneath, um, to a degree anyways, if there's some movement there, it, it allows the membrane itself to move and separate instead of the tiles moving and cracking. So it, uh, it basically uncoupling membrane just means it'll come apart. You know, if the floor moves or shifts a little bit, 
and prevents uh, tile damage and grout damage. So, uh, Daniel says, I'm here. I like this, bro. I'm glad you like it, Daniel. Uh, what else we got? Uh, Bulgaria, 1967. Thanks for all your help. I did a lot of remodeling in my house, which I can't be, which can't be done without your help. Well, that's good. I'm glad that we can help. Uh, that's that's why I'm here. So, I hope hopefully it turned out well. Uh, Bob Brown, howdy from Ohio. Love your videos. Help me improve my own rentals. That's good. Um, now I'm not sure if you're referring to the fact that maybe you're uh, a small contractor or something like that as well, but uh, we, we definitely have some contractors, I, I believe from what I understand, watching and, and, and learning some new skills as well. Um, I definitely have some that comment on the videos because they're sure I'm doing it all wrong and that's their opinion, but uh, I'm, I'm just here to help whoever wants to take my advice. So uh, Romero, despite this tough year, what was your biggest achievement? Ooh, good question. My biggest achievement. Um, I think really to adapt, we've all had to do that, right? Um, as human beings, we aren't really designed, most of us, to just go to work, come home, go to work, come home. You know, we, we need some other social interaction. I mean, there's a lot of people working from home that some like it, some don't. Some, some of us just need that social interaction, you know, chatting around the water cooler or whatever. So I think uh, for me, yeah, just, just learning to adapt to this new world and remembering to grab my mask every time I get out of the truck to go somewhere, and just all that. Um, uh, yeah, just adapting, I, I would say anyways. Uh, Adam, uh, let's see what he does. Thanks, Shannon. Yes, I was asking about making how-to videos or something close to a walkout over the roof. Thank you once again for sharing your knowledge. Like, liked and subscribed. Thanks, Adam. Uh, yeah, so you're going back to that walkout deck over a roof uh, comment that you made earlier. So, uh, SD, thanks for your video from Quebec. I don't think Quebec's locked down. Are you guys just Ontario? Uh, I think I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure right now Ontario in Canada is the only area that's kind of back in a lockdown. Unfortunately, uh, Kenzie dog. I used many of your videos when I was finishing my basement, much appreciated. I agree. Making some woodworking videos would be great for the new carpenters out there. Okay. Well, there's two people that want to see some birdhouses and those sorts of things. So we'll see what we can do about that. Uh, Seifer. Hello, Shannon. Any plans for installing skylights and how to flash them properly? Uh, no, as I mentioned earlier, you're probably not going to see me do any skylights. It's definitely not my expertise and it's not something I'm a big fan of because there's so many things that can be done wrong with them and they usually cause a leak, which causes more damage somewhere else. So not a big fan of them and I'm not experienced with them. So you probably won't see me do one. I wouldn't want to point you in the wrong direction. So uh daniel's just mentioning he's he was back a couple comments there i'm in uh ohio also uh yeah so jeremy uh lafournier uh can you explain the different uses for 15 16 and 18 gauge nailers I think you might have been on the forum today. <laughs> uh, this question looks really familiar from earlier in, in the day. Um, basically an 18 gauge nailer is typically what most people call a brad nailer. Uh, so it's for putting on baseboard, door casing, uh, basic trim work, crown mold, those sorts of things. When you get into the 15 and 16 gauge nailers, that's, a, as the gauge number gets uh, smaller, the, the nail or the pin actually gets bigger uh, in size and diameter. So 15, 16 gauge, they're just a, a, a bigger nail, a more sturdy nail. And what I use my uh, 15 gauge for is securing, like if uh, I was installing that door back here, this frame, I use that size of nailer with uh, like two inch nails to secure my door frame to the wall. So it's, it's things where, because it, because it's a bigger nailer, it leaves a bigger hole. So I tend to use it in places where 
the hole's not going to be seen or going to get covered up, but not usually in a place where I've got to actually fill that hole or whatever, because they're, they're a pretty big hole and you can fill them and paint them or whatever, putty them. But uh, anyways, for the most part, an 18 gauge is what you're going to use for a lot of things, but uh, a 15 or a 16 would be good for some other projects too. And you can shoot a little longer nails uh, generally, generally with them. Uh, and then you had another question about what you use them for. I think I just answered that as well. So, uh, Feng Che, Feng Che, Feng Sha. Not sure if I got that right. Uh, thank you so much for your videos. They were very well explained in all aspects. Basement project done. Uh, and can't wait to see more videos. That's awesome. Thank you. <coughs> Sorry, I'm getting a dry throat from all this talking. Um, demo demography now uh, do you have a power painter and what kind I believe mine is a Wagner actually I got to get a new one uh, I kind of forgot to clean it one day and it sat for a while and I think I've pretty much screwed it up so but it was a Wagner just one of those electric I think they call it an airless electric sprayer you know you screw the little cup on the bottom um You'll see it in a uh, video, I think, where I'm painting doors, I think, interior doors. That's all I use, and honestly, it works good on trim and doors and that sort of thing. I've tried some other different ones that, you know, suck right out of the can, that sort of thing, but it's not very convenient, and uh, unless you've got enough hose, it's, it's just not convenient. So I, I find the cup on the bottom that's, you know, half a gallon or whatever it is, it works quite well. Sometimes with latex paints, you got to thin them out. So it takes a bit of playing to know what you what you got to do, but they work. Um, mile 54 Productions. Yeah, Ontario is in the gray lockdown zone. Yeah, I knew you guys weren't, uh, you know, too much these days. So unfortunately, one day soon, hopefully you guys will all be out running around and uh, masking up like the rest of us. Gord. Keep up the good work. Your videos helped in a lot of my projects. I'm from Ontario. Thanks, Gord. Bob Brown, not a contractor, but was nervous about doing some renovations to a house I just bought. It made me feel I could do it. So that was, you mentioned before that you uh, you liked learning from our videos. I, I wasn't sure if you're a contractor or not, and you just answered that you were not. So, um Isla, planning on barricade subfloor tiles in basement. Which one goes first, subfloor or framing? Uh, honestly, uh, I normally do the exterior framing and, uh, well, really all the framing usually, and then I put the subfloor down. But there's really no reason that you couldn't do, do all the subfloor and then uh, frame the walls on top of it. There's really no reason you can't do that. Um, it's kind of up to you. I personally would probably install the exterior walls and then subfloor the, the space in between and then build your interior walls on top if you want to. Uh, so barricade flooring subfloor, that's just going back to the, we were talking earlier about DMX subfloors and uh, dry core and those sorts of things. So, um, 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 Susan, uh, hi, my friend thinks you're... <laughs> Hi, my friend thinks you're really cute and sweet and she wants to know if you're single. I am not single. I am happily married. Sorry. Sorry to disappoint. Uh, Surf Green Telecaster. Hey, Shannon. In my project, I ended up with a rough door opening of 34 and a half inches. Will I run any, into any issues installing a pre-hung 32 32-inch 32 door? Will I just need a little extra wood shims around it? Yeah, no, you're you're good with the 32-inch uh, door and a 34 and a half inch opening. It's a little bigger than it needs to be, the opening, but you'll be fine. It's better than too small because then you're buggered. So, uh, yeah, no, you're just going to need a little more shimming. Uh, and as long as your your door casing, you know, your trim around the door is wide enough, it'll, it'll cover that gap, no problem. So you should be fine. In fact, if you want, you can even, if you're, Door for opening is uh, your rough opening is pretty plumb. You can, you can even start out with like a piece of half inch plywood or whatever. Just put a whole strip on one side or the other to take up 
some of that room because 34 inches is really all you should need unless the opening is really out of plumb. Uh, TZ24, thanks for all you do. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. You're welcome. Uh, Jeremy, what is your opinion when it comes to truck versus trailer when running a construction company? Trailer, trailer, trailer. Well, you need a truck to pull it, but working out of a truck sucks. Once you've had a trailer, you wouldn't go back to a van or any, anything like that. I guess it depends what you do. If you only, if you're just a small handyman service and you only need a couple bags of tools every day, then a truck's fine. But if you're doing major renovations, then working out of your truck is not going to work, in my opinion. I've got a, a video actually showing my trailer and my setup too. So, um, what is the best? This is from Charlie Overton. What is the best way to get into carpentry? Uh, I guess it depends a little bit on your age. If you're relatively young and want to go to school to trade school, that's a that's a great way to start. Uh, like if you're looking at it as a career. Uh, then you can get your ticket and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but uh, you can also just get on with a crew and start working. And that could lead you going to school and getting your ticket anyways. So it just depends what your opportunities are. Um, weekend Handyman, great content, sir. Thanks for sharing the knowledge. You're very welcome. Slashed 07. I've used few of your videos for fascia and soffit on my shed earlier this summer. Videos were on point and really wanted to drop you a massive thank you. Keep up the great work from Montreal. Hey, no problem. I'm glad that uh, it worked for you and you were able to get your project done with some help for me. Uh, Jeremy, without your prices, can you explain or, or tips to quote jobs pricing for new construction company owners? Uh, you know, really, that's that's just something you got to learn. Um, it's uh, it's one of those trial by error things. You got to know what your bottom line is. You got to know what, how much money you need to make to keep your doors open. And uh, when you're first starting out, those numbers might have to be, you know, really slim just to get the work and get the experience and get the recommendations. So uh, uh, there's, I don't think there's one price that fits every company. Uh, it all depends on your area, what your area can withstand as far as uh, what you can charge. And uh, don't go into, you know, if you don't have a lot of experience, I wouldn't go charging top dollar right off the start because that's a tough way to get into the industry. You need to get your foot in the door first. So I don't think I can really give you too much more advice than that, but uh, stick to jobs that you can do, that you know you can do confidently and do well and just get your name out there. Um, Jeff Hitchcock, thanks for the deck building videos. Great help last summer or big help last summer, especially the railings and stairs. Hey, no problem, Jeff. Uh, were you one of those, uh, COVID stay at home worker DIYers last year? Everybody was taking on projects last year and that's, that's great. So unfortunately in this area, the price of lumber went up, so it made it a little more expensive, but if you're able to do it yourself, you're saving a lot. So uh idea idea adder hey 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 thanks a ton for your videos i finished the room i am sitting in right now watching your videos and uh he's from fredericton new brunswick new brunswick so that's good so you're just sitting back having a refreshment and watching the live stream that's good so just a bit of a reminder here we're going to wrap up pretty quick uh just a reminder hit that thumbs up uh, icon there. I, I appreciate it. Um, and I really, really like the fact that everybody wants to tune in. I, I had a little better time going every time I do it, it gets a little bit more comfortable uh, going through the chatting on the side and trying to respond. Um, everybody's asked some pretty reasonable questions today. Uh, so that's good. Uh, it's hard to get too in depth on here. And that's where the forum comes in. Uh, please use the form. It's a great place to get some help with your projects. So uh, take a few more questions. Um, haven't seen anybody complaining that they hate these live streams. So I'm thinking you guys don't mind it. 
Um, I'm seeing some new names today. I'm seeing some kind of what I'm going to call regulars. You know, we've got a few people that have been back a few times now. I think this must be about the fourth live chat maybe that we've done, the live stream. And uh, some of the names are starting to sound familiar, but uh, uh, there's a lot of people on here that I don't think you've been on here before, and I appreciate that, and I'm glad that you tuned in to check it out. I need to get a little bit more on top of uh, – planning these live streams out uh, sometimes they're just a bit of a spur of the moment thing and uh, and uh, we just get the word out at the last minute but and w I don't know about this time you know it's uh, we started at 7 p.m. Uh, my time on a Sunday I don't know how that worked out for everybody across the globe um, but we're we're hoping that time kind of works for most time zones and uh, if not I guess you can always uh, tune in later on just to see what we talked about as these these live streams aren't live anymore, but they stay up on our channel, and uh, anybody can view them afterwards, so or share them. Uh, let's see, uh, Alan, um, Shannon, greetings from Montreal. I like your channel. What underlayment would you put over over uh, dry core for tiling? Um, so if you're doing like a you're talking ceramic tile floor. Um, that's a good question. I would, uh, boy, I would think you're going to have to put like another at least five eighths plywood over top the dry core uh, to get a solid enough surface. And then, you know, maybe even a uh, uncoupling membrane, which is going to start to raise you up off your original floor pretty good. Um, dry core, I don't think is recommended tile directly over i'm pretty sure it wouldn't be um but yeah you're gonna have to plywood it or something you could i don't think you could do uncoupling membrane right on top of the dry core i could be wrong but uh i'm pretty sure you're gonna need another layer of uh subflooring um uh tamon uh, hey shanna thanks for producing such great videos question do one piece fiberglass <coughs> fiberglass stall showers usually have a water barrier installed between the shower and the wood floor below it. No, no. Um, so you're talking a fiberglass shower stall. There should be no reason to put a water barrier below it. Uh, if you've got a leak, then you've got a bad shower stall or a bad drain or not a good setup on your drain but no you shouldn't need a water membrane of any kind underneath a fiberglass shower stall uh charlie is it best to put posts on concrete or dig a hole when building a deck uh well depending on where you are a lot of places require your deck uh to be attached to the ground so either your post buried in the ground or your posts sitting on concrete which are attached to a bracket that's embedded in the concrete basically so basically the wind or hurricane or whatever can't blow your deck away um uh so let's see what what were you saying there put the post on concrete or dig a hole when building a deck so it, it really depends on what your code requires i i personally like to put a concrete pile in the ground set it up out of the ground a few inches at least and then have a a bracket that the post can mount into on that. That's what I like just to get the wood out of the ground. That's all. Um, but yeah, your local codes will kind of dictate what you can or can't do. Uh, Jeremy. So back to your, your truck trailer suggest or comment there. Sorry, Shannon, I meant to use a, I meant using a van box truck versus using a trailer. Again, I guess it depends what you do. If you can get everything in the van, uh, you know, to do what you got to do, fine. Um, I like the trailer. With my trailer, I've got the fold-down ramp on the back. So a lot of my bigger toolboxes and that sort of thing, uh, they've got wheels, so it's just easier to get stuff in and out. And it's just easier to get in the trailer even because you're not taking a big step up into the trailer or the van. I just walk up the ramp and it's just a little safer, a little easier. So I still like the trailer, but I guess it really depends on what you're doing. The, the bad thing with the trailer can be uh, parking, you know, getting around town because you're dragging that trailer around all the time. But uh, yeah, 
that's kind of really the only downfalls I see of a trailer. Kevin, uh, he's just commenting on the live stream. He says he doesn't have any issues with the live stream. He likes it, so that's good. Uh, Jeremy, again, uh, he's just asking if any of the videos and projects are on my own house. Yep, yeah, quite a few of them, actually. That's honestly the easiest way to uh, do our videos is if we can do it on our own property, um, just for legality and, and uh, opportunity. So, yeah, a lot of them are. Uh, Patrick Wade says, thanks, love the live stream. So we're getting a few people commenting. They like the live stream, so that's good. I'm glad. I guess you wouldn't be tuning in if you didn't. Overall, this is DW. Overall, what is the best tool brand you recommend most for construction? I'm a, I'm a Milwaukee guy. I, I like my red tools. Um, I've used DeWald over the years. Uh, and really don't have a problem with them either. Um, you know, Ry Ryobi, uh, it, it's really, it's really what you can afford to do the job you need to do. Um, if you're, if you're in it and you're making money off those tools, I think you want to use uh, quality tools, stick with the more name brand products where you can get service warranty, uh, parts or replacements are easier to get that sort of thing. And they just last longer. They're, they're, they're made for professional use. So if you're a homeowner, you can definitely get away with uh, um, you know, maybe some less expensive brands or uh, knockoff, not, maybe not knockoffs, but you know, lower end brands or lower priced brands um, for the amount of work you're going to do. So um, uh, seat for... If you get to this question, I'd like to know if you have any advice on not being lazy and procrastination on home improvement projects. Um, I don't know what, what my advice really can be. Um, I'm thinking if you're procrastinating, you've got one of two issues. Either you're not really sure what you're doing, uh, you're not confident in what you can do or are doing, or maybe you just don't want to be doing it. So, you know, maybe DIYing isn't for you. I don't know. Um, I'm the same way. There's some things I just put off and put off and put off and put off because I just don't want to do it. And eventually I've got to do it. So um, I, I think the best advice is if you get into a project, you know, get all your research done, know what direction you're going, what products you're going to use and just put your head down and get at it. So that's all I can really say. Uh, Kevin is uh, just mentioning at 7 p.m. in Utah, USA. So I don't, I don't know if uh, it was 7 p.m. when we started or 7 p.m. now. So whatever, you're, you're basically saying it's the same time basically is what I'm dealing with. So um, Rob, you're one of my favorite YouTubers to watch. So thanks, Rob. Appreciate that. Uh, AD, finished my entire house and your videos were a great help. The installation was quite long and painful and very happy with the results. The installation was quite long and painful, but he was happy with the results. What are your thoughts on hardwood floors in the kitchen? Um, it wouldn't be my first choice. Uh, the kitchen takes a lot of abuse. Um, you know, you're dropping, you might be dropping stuff food, water spills, that sort of thing. Uh, there's no reason you can't use hardwood in the kitchen, but um, it, it's going to take a bit of abuse for sure. Uh, Mark, what's your least favorite part of renovation? Uh, my least favorite part? I don't know. I I have days where I don't like any of it. <laughs> like every, anybody, right? Uh, I get a little tired of it sometimes. Uh, my least favorite part of renovations a lot of times is working on my own place. So, uh, you know, when you do it all week or all day and you come home and you got to do something here, it's uh, sometimes that's my least favorite part. But I, I like change. That's why I do a lot of different things. Um, I wouldn't want to just be installing windows or just doing flooring or just painting. Like I need I need that change. So sometimes bigger projects start to drag out for me and I'm glad to get them done. But uh, for the most part, I. I really don't mind it. Uh, Grace Bud, 
Are you in Saskatoon or Regina or something? <laughs> yeah, I'm somewhere kind of in between there. Let's just put it that way. Uh, you're in the right area. Um, I lived in Saskatoon once for a few years when I was first married, but I don't live there now. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, where are we getting? So we're pretty much wrapping up here. Um, we've got a question here. Let's try this one. Cheo, Kyle, geez, I don't know where this little bug has come from today. Um, hey, Shannon, how do you define your job title? Seems you cover several fields. I just, just get started kind of do variety of different jobs. But when people ask me what exactly I do, I, ha I have a hard time answering. I basically call myself a renovator contractor. Um, because that's mostly what I do is renovations. I don't build new houses as a rule. I mean, I build the odd new structure as far as garages or sheds, but for the most part, I'm, I'm tearing apart something old and redoing it. So I'm a renovation contractor. Um, and William, how did you get started in this business? So I'm not sure if you're referring to the business of YouTube videos or contracting, but uh, I will assume you're referring to my contracting business. Um, I'm a journeyman carpenter by trade. So I went into carpentry right out of high school and got working with the company and just yeah, finished my trade. I went away from it for a little while. I did, did a few other little things uh, when I first was married. And then I kind of came back to it and finished my schooling, got my journeyman, and then eventually I went out on my own. So that's kind of the cliff note version of me. <laughs> so uh, I think we're pretty much going to wrap up now. Uh, oh, the thumbs up are looking awesome, guys. Smash that before you leave. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm glad that we can get together and, and uh, do these live chats. I kind of feel like we're, I know we're not one-on-one, -on -one, but it feels, feels good to be able to talk with some, some people and uh, converse back and forth a little bit. And I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, my last thing I want to say is um, thanks for tuning in um, with COVID going on. Just stay safe, stay healthy, listen to your local government, uh, what they have to say, because they're there to, to hopefully protect us and keep us safe. Uh, some vaccines are coming out. So some people uh, want to get that as soon as they can. Some people are holding off to see what happens. But uh, for the most part, just listen to the government. And uh, yeah, stay safe, stay healthy, stay DIYing and stay watching our channel. Thanks, guys. We'll see you all later.